Hello and welcome to Model Steam Engines for Beginners. This is the first of the series and this one's called How to Set the Valve Timing on a Non-Reversing Steam Engine. I'm using a Stuart Turner 5A steam engine to illustrate how to do this, mainly because it's a large engine and it's easy to see what I'm doing. The principle, however, is exactly the same irrespective of the size of the steam engine. The slide valve in the steam chest is controlled by the eccentric, which positions the valve in the correct place relative to where the piston is in the cylinder in order to admit and exhaust the steam at the right time. The first thing to do is to remove the steam chest cover. You may be lucky first time and the steam chest cover will come away, but usually it's either stuck to a gasket or stuck to some sealant that may have been previously used. Carefully use a sharp knife to separate the steam chest cover from the steam chest. Be careful that you don't damage the metal, particularly if you have a gunmetal cylinder which is very soft. On a Stuart 5A, the valve arrangement is slightly different to the little ones. On the smaller Stuart models, the valve spindle is threaded in the centre as you see here, but it doesn't have the double lock nuts. On the smaller engines, there's a threaded crossbar which sits in a slot in the valve, and all you have to do is rotate the valve spindle to make the position adjustment of the valve. I've been moving the valve up and down on the video as you can see, which clearly shows the inlet ports at the top and the bottom. You can see also that the valve is free to move a little bit, because if it's tight, it won't seat on the valve face. It's the pressure of steam in the steam chest that holds the slide valve onto the valve face. Next, as you rotate the crankshaft, have a look what the valve's doing. At bottom dead centre of the piston and top dead centre of the piston, the valve must move equally. So if you have a look at the ports, they must be uncovered equally at both ends of the stroke. The slide valve via the valve spindle is driven by an eccentric. An eccentric converts rotary motion into reciprocating motion, but not vice versa and an eccentric is ideal for driving valves. We need to have a closer look at this eccentric and understand the relationship between where the eccentric is and the crank pin, which is connected to the connecting rod and via the piston rod directly to the piston. The setting of this eccentric, which will be covered very shortly, is critical. If it's not set right, the engine will run very badly. When you get it perfectly right, it will run very well. When setting the valves, always rotate the engine in one direction only. Never go backwards, because any backlash in the chain will not give you a true reading when you're looking at the valves in the valve chest. This video about valve timing is a little back to front. There is a reason for this. It's just to try and make you understand what's going on before we get down to the nitty gritty. The first thing to do is set the eccentric. The eccentric needs to have the highest point of the eccentric set at 90 degrees to the crank pin. If you look at the eccentric that's just been on the video, you'll see which is the highest point. The relationship between the eccentric and the crank pin sets the direction of rotation for the crankshaft. With the highest point of the eccentric set to 90 degrees from the crank pin, this is in a good enough position to be able to set the valve accurately. When setting the valve, Make sure that it uncovers the ports at the top and the bottom equally. This is very important, it has to be in the middle. Don't worry if it wobbles around a little, as I mentioned earlier the slide valve has to have some float. Once you have the valve in the correct position, rotate the crankshaft. Adjust the slide valve position so that the top inlet port is just cracked open very slightly as the piston gets to top dead centre. And similarly, do it with the lower port. Adjust the slide valve position so that the bottom inlet port is just cracked open as the piston reaches the bottom dead centre. Adjust the valve as necessary to get this to happen. Then replace the steam chest cover and connect a compressed air supply to the engine. Don't use too much pressure, you just need the engine to run nice and slowly so you can see what's happening. Now you need to adjust the eccentric slightly to achieve the type of admission that you require for the steam engine application. Next we need to connect the compressor to the engine, but with not much pressure, just enough to hear the admission at each end of the stroke. You should be able to see what I'm doing here without me speaking about it, so I'd like to say one or two things about steam engines and admission. You do not necessarily want the steam to enter the cylinder when the piston is at top or bottom dead centre at each end. What you need to do is have the steam enter slightly before, which cushions the piston and pushes it back down the cylinder in the opposite direction. When live steam is admitted to the cylinder, it immediately starts to cool, 
and as it cools it expands and this expansion gives an extra kick to the piston and really bounces it down the cylinder. You don't get this effect with compressed air, that's why steam engines always run much better on live steam, provided they're built right and set up right in the first place. The video is showing me setting up this engine until I get the beats to be exactly where I want them. Yes, you can do this by opening the valve chest and timing the valves and this, that and the other, but I always do it by feel and by ear. But don't forget, don't put too much pressure in the engine, particularly a thing like this, which is one and a half horsepower. You don't want to tear your arm off. And needless to say, keep your fingers well clear of the engine when it's running. You will have noticed that I keep stopping the engine and turning the crankshaft by hand via the flywheel with a little bit of air going in and you can hear exactly when the steam's been admitted to the cylinder. If you foul up and turn it the wrong way, just start again. Remember, always go back to the starting point and the highest lobe of the eccentric needs to be at 90 degrees to the crank pin. Here, we're very close indeed. And by turning the crankshaft, you can see where the steam is admitted. You'll hear the slight hiss. And it's just before top dead centre. And when the engine's running, you can hear the difference. It's time now for a final tweak. A very minute adjustment that makes all the difference. When you get it right, the exhaust beats will be very even. No jumping, skipping beats. A straight chuff, chuff, chuff type of sound. This is what we want. And the engine will run better, make less mechanical noise and be much more powerful if you do it this way. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.